<laughs> Call me Filiac. No, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audio Filiac Daily Show. And today, well, today it is all about the PSB speakers AM5 active speaker. Yeah, Steve's going active today. I'm not the biggest booster of active speakers, but this one, I felt differently about this one. First of all, it's more affordable than any other active speaker I've done. Uh, it's $599 a pair. There's actually a somewhat smaller version that's $399 a pair, but they're, they're very similar designs. But the, the AM5 is basically the active version of the PSB Alpha P5. When you look at them side by side from the front, kind of the same thing, except that the hint on the AM5 that it's active it has a volume control right there on the front. And it also has a, an LED that changes color to tell you what input and what, what it's doing at that given moment. So there is a small visual clue that which one is which. So the AM5 and the P5 do share a lot. The same three quarter inch aluminum dome tweeter, the same five and a quarter inch polypropylene woofer on the top but above the tweeter. That's kind of cool. Uh, the same passive crossover. But, oh, the, this, the, this whole shebang is designed by, as all PSP speakers, uh, they're all designed by Paul Barton. Super nice guy. I had a nice chat with him just yesterday. We had a great time together. Anyway, he explained that, so it uses this tech, Texas Instrument chip amp, and he had uh, eight bands of equalization, DSP, to apply to this to the AM5 to smooth the response. He also added uh, a 4 dB boost <clears throat> at 54 hertz. Now, in terms of other features that I think are really cool uh, are, well, there's modes that you can put the speaker through, uh, basically stereo mono. Okay, that's kind of cool. And then there's also a dialogue enhance feature. So you can bring up dialogue for movies or TV shows. Unfortunately, I didn't try that. And then there's stereo wide positions. There's two, wide and wider. Now, usually those kinds of processing to increase stereo uh, separation and width, they sound fake and phasey and usually downright annoying. But this, this algorithm that they're using here works extremely well. I, I actually liked it. I spent a good deal of time listening in the wider than normal stereo positions because it just sounded good. It was just enjoyable. So I like that a lot now, but seriously, for most of my hard nose reviewing time, I was listening in plain vanilla stereo. So I know, you, I know a lot of audiophiles poo poo Bluetooth. Uh, but I spent a lot of time listening via Bluetooth to Tidal and Cobas and internet radio stations. And it is Aptex Bluetooth, by the way. And it sounded good. Very enjoyable. I mean, in a background music sort of way. So anyway, so we got Bluetooth input. We have a 3.5 millimeter analog input. Um, also a turntable input for moving magnet cartridges. And by the way, it's not just any old, like, iffy phono input, it's actually the NAD phono pre circuitry is incorporated into the AM5. So it's, it's pretty, it's got to be pretty decent. I didn't have a turntable with a moving magnet cartridge on it, so I can't tell you what it sounded like. And for digital connections, there's Toslink and also USB. The DAC inside the speaker is um, limited to 48K 16-bit, so nothing fancy. Nothing high res going on here. And you know what? For this kind of speaker, I don't see that as a major uh, issue. Not for me, at least. So that's where we stand in terms of features. Now, I would say <clears throat> my main gripe with this speaker was its user interface. Now, it has a remote control for volume, but also to set the modes what, that I discussed earlier. And also there's a subwoofer output. The, there's an RCA subwoofer output jack on the back panel. <clears throat> and on the remote, you can select uh, to high pass the speaker so that it's not getting the lowest frequencies, or you can run it full range. But the thing is, uh, you can't tell whether you're in or out of that subwoofer mode because there's no indication on the speaker. There's no display on the speaker. So if you accidentally hit that button, 
you probably wouldn't notice it until you realize the speaker is not making much bass. So I wish there was a display on the front panel uh, of the speaker. Now I also like that it has bass and treble controls. Uh, but again, you can get lost in the bass and treble controls because you won't know where they are in terms of boost or cut, except by toggling them up and down via the buttons and then finding the center again where the bass and treble are flat. I wish there was a simpler way to do that. You're, you're basically telling by the LED is changing colors as it's going up and down. Seems kind of mm, not, not crazy about that. And it's too easy to accidentally hit the, the mode button or the bass and treble or the subwoofer buttons on there and not know that you've done it. So, But you know, once you get used to it, I, I'm just reviewing it for a few days. Once you live with the product, I think that that kind of stuff just naturally, beca it's, it becomes a non-issue. So I see this speaker as a music lover speaker. Uh, somebody who just wants to play tunes, they don't want to mess around with boxes and cables and trying things out. They just want to have fun with, with their music. And that, I think the AM5 does a really good job with. So my first recording that I played was by David Johansson. Maybe you guys remember David Johansson. He was in the New York Dolls and later he became uh, his alter ego was Buster Poindexter. But he made a few records for Chesky uh, back in the day. And I was present at those sessions. And I gotta say, he was having fun. Uh, he enjoyed recording live to two-track. He just, there was a directness to the sound that appealed to him. And he was really singing out. You know, he was like wailing. He was, you know, he's singing over the band. He doesn't have a separate microphone for him. There's only a, at that point, one stereo microphone. So he had to really belt it out. And he was into that. He really, really was. And uh, the music isn't dynamically compressed or EQ'd. And I was very happy with the way the AM5 handled Johansson's bellowing vocals. He could really wail. And the speaker had no problem keeping up with Mr. Johansson. From David Johansson, I went to Son of Dave. Now, Son of Dave, uh, I think he actually came from Crash Test Dummies, the band Crash Test Dummies. Anyway, Son of Dave takes a very contemporary approach to blues. It feels doesn't feel like he's trying to recreate 1955 or anything. And he's having fun. It's, it's light, but he's, he has a sense of groove and pace and rhythm that really appealed to me. And that was cool. But I will say the speaker, the AM5, to me seemed a tad bright. So I scooched down with bass and treble controls. I took the treble down one or two notches. I brought the bass up one notch. And I stayed in that position a lot of the time. I also listened flat, but especially with, you know, contemporary compressed music like Son of Dave, I preferred the treble down bass up a little tiny bit. Com compared to the, the Bowers and Wilkins 607 S2 Anniversary Edition speaker I just reviewed, which is $699 a pair. Now that speaker, <laughs> is a more refined, more audiophile oriented speaker. It's much more transparent, it's more open sounding, it's bass is faster and very clean compared to the AM5. The AM5 is a, a few notches down from what the 607 sounded like here. And that I just did very, very recently. But the 607 requires you know, a separate amplifier and possibly a DAC, et cetera, et cetera, to make it really strutted stuff. The AM5 is uh, hook up your sources and you're good to go. Speaking of bass, <laughs> I played this, this, this group called Evolution of Dub and they have a version of Duke of Earl, the 1950s, I guess, doo-wop soon. It's an instrumental and it was so much fun. And the AM5 just like laid down that groove, man. It was solid. <laughs> I never felt like I needed to add a subwoofer. It's a little speaker with a five and a quarter inch, but maybe thanks to that DSP that uh, Paul Barton dialed in, this speaker's low end is very, very satisfying. So I played some Pink Floyd. Now I have this collection called Pink Floyd, the early years. There's a whole bunch of these compilations that came out. And this one that I'm showing you now, uh, I, I love 
the pre-dark side of the moon Pink Floyd. Now I know I'm in a minority here. I think most of you guys are dark side of the moon forward. I like the early more experimental side, the more ambient side. Just it had more of an edge, you know, especially the like the freak out tunes like Interstellar Overdrive or Set the Controls for the Heart of the Sun, that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's more Steve than Dark Side of the Moon. I, I like Dark Side of the Moon and I kind of like the wall, but it's really the early stuff that that gets to me. And uh, the AM5, in, in terms of that big ambient wash on the on the quieter tunes, was very, very very nice, very audiophile actually, no, no doubt about it. So it, 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 the AM5 can play on many levels is what I'm saying. It can be pretty ballsy, but it can also do ambient stuff nice. And no, and then when you add on that stereo extra wide feature, you can just lose yourself in the music. So as I said, the stereo can get wide, but I was concerned that there wasn't much soundstage depth so I popped on this David Chesky recording as trios and uh, piano, bass, drums. I was pre present at the session, and yes, the delineation of the bass, piano, drums was, was actually very nice. Uh, I said, yeah, this, you feed it good sound with good recordings, and the AM5 delivers the goods. So there you have it. I think the PSB AM5 is right on target. I think for a person who's more of a music lover than an audiophile, just wants to play tunes, not fuss with boxes and wires and stuff, yeah, this is highly recommendable. And if you want a smaller version of that, get the AM3 for $399, the AM5 is $599, and you'll be a happy camper. So I think we're good. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. If you like what I'm doing here, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you have already subscribed, thank you so much for doing that. What else can I tell you? Well, uh, let's see. If you really like what I'm doing, you could check out the Patreon at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac, and I will link to that below. But now I have this new uh, thing to talk about at the ends of these videos, and that is free audiophile music, meaning music that is not dynamically compressed, not equalized, not processed in any way. And Chesky Records and uh, MA Recordings made samplers just for you guys, They're for the Audiophiliac channel. And they're free, and you can just download them from their respective sites. And I link to the videos that I made about those samplers. There's one Chesky sampler and two uh, MA recording samplers. And I'll link to those videos below. So if you want to hear what your system can really do without compression or equalization stuff, you got to check out those recordings. Um, and then, but while you're here, you could check out my playlist, playlist for speaker reviews and headphone reviews and electronics reviews and music reviews. And Interviews, lots and lots of interviews. I wish I had interviewed Paul Barton at some point uh, with COVID. It's not happening right now, but someday Paul and I will do this face to face. But while you're here though, there's plenty of interviews. And I think I can now say my work here is at last complete. Thank you again for watching. And I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.